Moscow has hit back at the United States after Washington accused Russia of violating a key nuclear missile treaty. On Tuesday, the U.S. Secretary of State gave Moscow an ultimatum, saying it has two months to demonstrate it is complying with the INF before Washington pulls out. In light of these facts, the United States today declares it has found Russia in material breach of the treaty and will suspend our obligations as a remedy effective in 60 days unless Russia returns to full and verifiable compliance. So Russia now has a last chance to come back into compliance with the INF Treaty, but we must also start to prepare for a world without the treaty. All right, for more on this, let's cross live now to Arti's uh, Ilya Petrenko. Uh, Ilya, this seems to be a fair amount of back and forth going on here. What is this spat all about? Good afternoon, Rory. Well, Russia is not violating anything. That's how Moscow puts it in the first place, as simple as that. And here's what I heard from the Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman just a little earlier. No evidence has been presented to back up the U.S. position. If such evidence has been shown to NATO by the American side, why are they hiding it from Russia? Russia is utterly opposed to the tearing up of the INF Treaty. We are ready for dialogue to address all the issues raised in connection with the document. And guess what? Moscow has a problem with how Washington has been complying here. It's about the American missile defense systems in Europe. Russia was kept being told that the reason it's there is to uh, target whatever could fly over from Iran or North Korea. However, it could easily be used against Russia too. And this kind of argument dates back to quite some while ago. Uh, the arms race is getting out of control. We, uh, we did not initiate this turn of events, as you know. It was not we who pulled out of the anti-ballistic missile treaty. Russia has de been developing destabilizing weapon systems for more than a decade in direct violation of its treaty obligations. We only responded to the threats that confronted us. We're moving forward to modernize our nuclear arsenal and ensure that our capabilities remain unmatched. We will never allow anybody to have anything even close to what we have. If our American partners exit the agreement, we will give an immediate and reciprocal response. The INF Treaty has been there for 30 years, and under its terms, the Russians and the Americans are not allowed to produce or test short-range and medium-range missiles that could carry nuclear warheads. If the treaty's gone, Europe will find itself under the most serious risk. Are Washington's allies there happy about that? Well, some of them have openly said that they're not. We regret the withdrawal announced by the U.S. We see this treaty as a very important arms control instrument and something that also serves European interests and therefore also German interests. The announcement by the U.S. that it's going to withdraw from the INF Accord is regrettable. The INF agreement has been an important pillar of our European security architecture for 30 years. For us in Europe, it's of great importance. We call on the U.S. to consider the possible consequences. The U.S. and uh, uh, Russia need to uh, remain engaged in constructive dialogue to preserve the treaty and to ensure uh, that it's uh, uh, it, to ensure its full and verifiable implementation, which of course is crucial for Europe's and global security. So the risks are out there. The whole balance of European, uh, actually global security is at stake. So watch out for the next steps that the Russian and the American diplomats are going to make in the next, what is it now, 59 days. All right, Artis Yulia Petrenko, they're right outside the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you. We spoke earlier with former U.S. diplomat Jim Jatras. He told us that he doesn't believe that Washington will stick with the INF Treaty. 
I think it's quite likely the U.S. will pull out of this treaty. I think the uh, the end of the story that just finished, that on the one hand, yesterday we have Donald Trump saying we don't, we don't want a new arms race, we're spending too much. And then today we have Secretary Pompeo saying this, whatever Trump's impulses might be to either have an agreement with the Russians and as well as with the Chinese, to have a better relationship, that he has a national security team that is comp entirely composed of the wrong people. And what they want to do is to put Russia Russia into an untenable security position, and this is simply one more rock they can throw at Moscow, and they don't really care what the consequences are. That is what my fear is here, and my fear regarding the Europeans and how it will affect our relationship with them is they simply do not have the courage or the, uh, the strength of character to say to the Americans, no, this is bad for us, this is bad for Europe, this endangers our security, we won't go along with this.